Hello, everybody. So we're going to start Chapter 8, Multiples of Unit Fractions. So we're going to be multiplying fractions in Chapter 8. And our central question, how can you write a fraction as a product of a whole number and a unit fraction? So at a pizza party, each pizza was cut into six equal slices. Six equal slices. At the end of the party, there were five sixths of a pizza left. Roberta put each of the leftover slices in its own freezer bag. How many bags did she use? What part of a pizza did she put in each bag? All right, so the pizza was cut into six slices. So that's important because it tells us that the size of the parts are sixth size pieces. There was five sixths left. She put each of the leftover slices in its own freezer bag. How many bags did she use? And what part of a pizza did she put into each bag? All right, so how many slices of pizza were eaten? One. Because if it was cut into six equal pieces and there's five sixths left, they only ate one. What fraction of the pizza is one slice? Well, every slice is one sixth. So we can write the five. We can write five sixths as the product of a whole number and a unit fraction. So here's our pizza, and we know that each piece is one sixth. The the one piece that's missing that was the one that was eaten. So the picture shows five sixths, or five sixth size parts. Each sixth size part of the pizza can be shown by the unit fraction one sixth. Remember a unit fraction means the numerator is one. Okay now we can use the unit fractions to show five sixths in two ways. We know that we can add them. We would have five add-ins to give us five sixths or we could say how many one sixths do we have we have five of them right so we could multiply five times one sixth so the number of add-ins or the multiplier represents the number of bags used the unit fractions represent the part of a pizza in each bag. So each bag has one sixth size piece, and there are five bags. So she used five bags to put one sixth of a pizza in each bag. How can you write three halves as the product of a whole number? and a unit fraction. How can you write three halves and a, and a unit fraction? Okay, so three halves can be written can be written as one half plus one half plus one half, which is the same as saying three times one half. How many one halves do we have? Three. So three times one half. Multiples. The product of a number and a counting number is a multiple of the number. We covered that in chapter four. You have learned about multiples of whole numbers. The products one times four, two times four, three times four, and so on are multiples of four. The numbers four, eight, twelve, and so on are multiples of four.
We can also find multiples of unit fractions. So for instance, 1 times 1 fourth is 1 fourth. And we can use models to represent or write the next four multiples of 1 fourth. So here's the next one, which would be 2 times 1 fourth. 1 fourth, 1 fourth gives us 2 fourths. Then if we had three sets of 1 fourth, we would have 3 fourths. And with multiplying 1 fourth by 4, we'd have 4 fourths. If we multiplied by 1 fourth by 5, we would have 5 fourths. Okay. So what are the multiples of 1 fourth? 1 fourth, uh, 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths, 6 fourths, so on and so on. Okay, so 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths. That would be the next four multiples of 1 fourth. Use a number line. We could also use a number line to write multiples of 1 fifth. So we're going to, right here we see 0 and 1. So I know these in between here are less than 1 whole. I can figure out how much the size of each part is by how many lines there are between 0 and 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lines. So each line is 1 fifth or a multiple of 1 fifth. So 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 5 fifths, or 1. Okay, so. So the multiples of one fifth are two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths. Simple as that. So 331. <clears throat> Use the picture to complete the equations. So three fourths, if I was making these the sum of unit fractions, I would say one fourth plus one-fourth, plus one-fourth. So this is the same as saying three times one-fourth. Write the fraction as a product of a whole number and a unit fraction. So here, the four tells us basically the whole number. It's going to tell us, tells us how many fifths we need. So I'm going to need four times the unit fraction one-fifth. So this, I'm going to need three one-tenths, eight-thirds, I'm going to need eight sets of one-third. List the next four multiples of the unit fraction. So we're just counting up, right? One-sixth, two-sixths. 3 6, 4 6, 5 6, and 1 third. Okay, 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds. Write the fraction as a product of a whole number and a unit fraction. So the unit fraction in 5 6 is 1 6. So how many 1 6 do I have? I have 5. In number 8, my unit fraction is 1 4. And I have 9 of those 1 4. Number 9. My unit fraction is 1 one hundredth, and I have three of them. Number 10, list the next four multiples of the unit fraction. 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths. Next four multiples of 1 eighth. 
two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths. Number 12. Robin uses a half cup of blueberries to make each loaf of blueberry bread. Explain how many loaves of blueberry, br blueberry bread she can make with two and a half cups of blueberries. All right, well, what does two and two half represent in, in terms of halves? How many halves do I have? Well, in two holes, I have two halves plus two halves plus one half, right? Okay, what did I do? I renamed the two holes as two halves plus two halves plus the leftover one half. So that gives me five halves. Well, the unit fraction is one half. And how many one halves do we have? We have five. So she can make five two and a half can be rewritten five halves or five times one half. So she can make five loaves of blueberry bread. Nigel cut a loaf of bread into 12 equal slices for number 13. His family ate some of the bread and now 5 twelfths of the loaf is left. Nigel wants to put each of the leftover pieces in, in its own bag. How many bags does Nigel need? So, we started off with 12 twelfths, right? Because he, he cut the loaf of bread into 12 equal slices. So, there are 12 equal slices in the bread. Now there's 5 twelfths left. So, he wants to put each of the leftover pieces in its own bag. So, I didn't even need to know 12 twelfths, okay? I just need to know that there's 5 twelfths left. How many bags does he need? Well, the unit fraction for one for twelfths is one twelfth. How many one twelfths do we have? We have five. So he needs five bags. Fourteen. Which fraction is a multiple of one fifth? Well, that one clearly isn't. The denominator's got to be a five in order for it to be a multiple of five. Well, it can't be that one either, okay? To be a multiple of one-fifth, the denominator must be five. So four-fifths would be, and so would three-fifths, okay? One-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, five-fifths, six-fifths, onward. All right, page 332. Whose statement makes sense? Whose statement is nonsense? Explain your reasoning. There is no multiple of one sixth between three sixths and one sixth. Well, what are the multiples of one sixth? One sixth, two sixths, three sixths, four sixths. I didn't say anything different between three sixths and four sixths. So I'm thinking Gavin is, is right. How about four fifths is a multiple of one fourth? No, that, that's nonsense. There's no counting number of one-fourth. That would be four-fifths. We go one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, five-fourths. 
So maybe she got confused and switched the numerator and denominator. I, I don't know. But there's no way of one fourth. It, four fifths is not a multiple of one fourth. So Gavin is correct. Gavin makes sense. Um, three six equals three times one six, and four times one six equals four six. So there wouldn't be a counting number in between. Three times one six is three six, and four times one six is four six. But you notice I went from the counting number of three to a counting number of four. There's there's no counting numbers in between, so he's right. Now four fifths. So Abigail's is nonsense. There is no counting number times one fourth that would equal four fifths. The multiples of one fourth are two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths. Six fourths, and so on. Okay. The denominator is always a fourth, okay. and we know that by the multiples, the the denominator is always the same. For the statement that is nonsense, write a new statement that makes sense. Well, what can we say? We could say four fifths is a multiple of one fifth. That would be true. One fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths. Uh, what could be another possibility? I guess we could, if we wanted to stick with the multiple of fourths, we could say five fourths is a multiple of one fourth. So either of those statements are is right. Anyway, that's it for lesson 8.1. Our next lesson will be multiples of fractions. So until our next lesson, may the numbers always be in your favor.